Der Seven in the isolation chamber and once again WWE's programming is becoming more and more and more of a chore to watch every single week. This week's episode of Raw had serious WWE pay-per-view kickoff show vibes. We saw a few promo packages, a couple of interviews, a match or two here and there, but bloody hell are we going through the motions or what? Could you imagine if Randy Orton's show saving ish promo didn't happen on this week's Raw? Ooh, ugly. And just in case you weren't sure, WrestleMania 36 is the WrestleMania that is too big for one night. I don't know if they said that enough during this show. Hit the intro. And we kick things off in this video for all of the WTF moments for last night's Raw with a WTF moment that happened mere hours before last night's Raw went on the air. Why the hell is that thing taking place at WrestleMania 36? Please, if you know, let me know because I don't think even Simon Miller himself will have an answer for that thing happening there. I mean, on one hand, it's good for the lads to get a WrestleMania payday. If they're on the card, they're making more money, good for them. But on the other hand, from a purely fan's perspective, WWE, and I'm getting on my knees for this. Look at this, I'm a tiny little man. Please do the right thing and take the normal length of WrestleMania, eight hours they've been for the past couple of years. Take that, split it in half, four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday, because this match here, especially, along with big baldy bastard Baron Corbin versus Elias, is telling us you're going to try and do eight hours both nights, and that is not healthy. And it was so weird, right, because I was watching the start of last night's Raw, and all of a sudden, I don't know what hit me, but I broke out into a little song and dance of Beyonce's 2006 banger. Deja vu. You know the one that goes, baby, I swear it's deja vu. Like that. On one hand, I might have broken out into that performance because my hippity doos move in a similar fashion to Beyonce. But on the other hand, this might have happened because I was watching the same Paul Heyman and Drew McIntyre promo that aired on Raw a few weeks ago. And the best part of it was, WWE, the lazy bastards, didn't even edit out the part where Big Daddy the Ray, said I did this to Brock Lesnar last week, the wee bastard. Even though what he was talking about there, when he said last week happened bare time ago. However, man, WWE, pull that finger out your arsehole. This is beyond the joke. How lazy can you get? And I know what I'm talking about because I'm the laziest man. Since that fellow with the stash from Lazy Town, rest in peace. And finally, they moved the hard cam. Finally, we're not looking at a series of rows of black chairs and doesn't it make a hell of a lot of difference? Was it just me or did Paul Heyman say that Drew McIntyre is going to get douched out at WrestleMania 36 in that match against Brock Lesnar? I think he did. Now if Paul Heyman did this provides us with yet another WTF moment because for once I've taken myself over to Urban Dictionary and looking at all of the definitions it would appear da dick as I like to call it has failed me for the first time in the history of the world. Because it would appear all the definitions on there do not apply to the way Paul Heyman was saying Drew McIntyre will be douched out to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Paul. What are you planning on getting Brock to do to Drew? And then we saw the commentators for this week's show and no Jerry Lawler is a very good thing. Why the hell, in this day and age especially, was he on last week's show? You did the right thing, WWE, but you took your sweet time, didn't you? But then Tom Phillips does what Tom Phillips does best on WWE commentary and he face fornicated the poo out of a line on commentary. This self-isolation is making me lose my mind when he claimed that WrestleMania 36 is the the only WrestleMania, only WrestleMania, too big for one night. And let me tell you, Tom Phillips and the rest of WWE is a man who has to watch WrestleMania in its entirety, twice, back to back, over the course of one day to provide two videos on this illustrious YouTube channel. WrestleMania 36 is by far not, and I repeat not, the only WrestleMania too big 
for one night. Make them shorter, man. And then Tom Phillips went twos up on that face fornication ting when he claimed that Paul Heyman said, quote, Drew McIntyre will just be another that tried at WrestleMania. Now, with what I said a couple of points ago in mind, that might be what was on Paul Heyman's script, Tom Phillips, but that is fine. That's not what came out of Paul's mouth, is it? And a big old bloody threesome for Tom Phillips. Well, I do recall that his password on his tablet device is 6969. Of course, Tom, you disgust me. But this time, Tom Phillips claimed that Gronk, you know, that weird dancing thing who appeared on last week's SmackDown, had a great idea by suggesting to the powers that be the big baldy bastard Baron Corbin takes on Elias at WrestleMania 36. Great idea, big baldy bastard Baron Corbin versus Elias, Gronk, and the rest of WWE and the Fox executives who are apparently making the matches on the SmackDown side of the WrestleMania card. That is barely a feud. I mean, I guess when we're looking at Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley on the Raw side of things, at least Elias and big baldy bastard Baron Corbin have talked to each other on the weekly show. But bloody hell, is this what we're coming to for a WrestleMania card? Hey, man from blinding lights cover, no blood whatsoever. Do you not know what PG these days, you knobhead? Don't you know the story about how Batista and Chris Jericho had their pants pulled down by me, Vince McMahon? When they bled back in the day. Well, you do now. Sorry, neighbours. And just in case you haven't seen that thing on the Netflix yet, that is who Uncle Alan Styles was calling The Undertaker a gothic version of. And let me tell you, after that thing surfaced on the internet last week, Uncle Alan, he's got a point, hasn't he? And speaking about that video with Big Money Michelle and Big Mean Mark Calloway in the swimming pool with the Liger Tiger Tiger things, I can't believe that's now canon within a storyline in a WWE program building to a WrestleMania match. It's too bloody weird. And then we got to the end of that AJ Styles promo and yet another week and yet another week of AJ Styles cutting a long promo where he told precisely zero lies. Remind me, how is this man the heel in the feud? In the feud. In the feud. That was weird. This is your match taker. This is for you. Ah. Once again, not a song from Randy Newman, but once again, a direct quote from Uncle Alan AJ Styles to The Undertaker. And I was left asking, why was Uncle Al pretending everyone at home knew what a boneyard match actually is? I mean, later on in the show, with the commentators confused, we would learn that nobody knows what a boneyard match is, but the way that AJ Styles cut that line in the promo there you would have thought we're supposed to know what one is. And I don't know about you at home, but when I heard The Undertaker and Uncle Alan James Cuthbert Styles would be doing the wrestles in a boneyard match, they would be doing it, A, in the same place where the hyenas frolic and have a lovely play in The Lion King, or maybe even a retirement home. Or maybe, just maybe, this is the way that WWE here in 2020 are going to rename the Buried Alive match. AJ Styles did say, this one's for you, Undertaker. But why would they do that then? Why would they rename Buried Alive? Dun, 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 dun. Raw tag team titles at the front, SmackDown tag team titles up at the back there. And we hear the Street Profits endlessly talk about, we want the smoke, but it looks like Kevin Dunn or whoever actually is responsible for that match graphic there has been smoking something every day. Weed. Now some of you might be thinking that Charlie Caruso quite literally gushing, that's the wrong word to use, Ross Twiddell. Making it clear, very clear, that your fancy's Angel Gaza is the real WTF moment from that screenshot there. But no, mon frere, as the French might say, that's not it, chief. It's actually the fact that WWE are letting robotic backstage interviewer show a bit of character rather than asking silly question than pulling face A. If the person they're asking the question to is a heel or pulling face B. If the person they ask the question to is a face. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I guess fair play to the referee for trying to enforce the actual rules during a tag team match, but when? 
ever does holding the tag team rope matter during any tag team match in any promotion in the year 2020. I mean it mattered so much in this particular tag team match in the year 2020 that the tag team rope was still tucked away when the pissing match began. I guess it set up a fun spot with Angel Garza distracting the referee allowing Andrade to put the boots to several athletic and jumpy men but why? Why this throwaway tag match on Raw and not the big tag team matches on all the pay-per-views? It seemed a little bit strange. So next up we have Tom Phillips asking the Street Profits what do you make of Zelina Vega calling Andrade and Angel Garza the most skilled and charismatic tag team in all of WWE? And then Angelo Dawkins, after being asked that question, remember, replies, I mean they have a lot of charisma, but they ain't us. They ain't the Street Profits. So Zelina was right then, was she Angelo? Just let Big Terry, Big Tessie Ford, do all the talking, please. Bad girl, bad girl, he killed him. Jim Ross might have said if he was commentating on this match. <laughs> but I, a literal slobber knocker, look at all that spit fly, man. But the real WTF moment here has to be the fact that Cedric Alexander Spittle manages to stay together even when it's been stretched over a couple of yards. What the hell's his spit made from? Cum. <laughs> but what is also another WTF moment is the fact that WWE are finally letting Andrade use his elbow, which looks a hell of a lot better than somebody else's elbow, be a finishing move. I think this was the first time it was used as a finisher, so I guess it's going to be a WTF moment then, hasn't it? Did Shayna Baszler forget to take the clothes hanger out of her coat jacket before she put it on? How the hell has she sat that straight up? Now I've been really bored recently, so I watched last week's thrilling instalment of main event. And wouldn't you just know it, Alistair Black and Leon Ruff had the same match that they had on last week's main event on last night's episode of Monday Night Raw. Once again, WWE, you lazy bastards. Kevin Owens, your WrestleMania track record reads like this. Failure after failure after failure after failure. And when Seth Rollins said this, I was left asking, has Chris Jericho been Chris Benoit? As we all know, back at WrestleMania 33, Chris Jericho lost the United States Championship to Kevin Owens in a match that culminated a feud that should have main evented that year's WrestleMania. But for some reason, that doesn't count in the mind of the delusional heel Seth Rollins who should be lying and is lying, so good for him. And also, Seth, you no good dirty liar, Becky Lynch, run away from this scoundrel will you please you saying you've got this perfect record at wrestlemania i saw what happened at wrestlemania 31 when you flew in the sky and got dropped on your neck you bastard aye i don't forget because I'm an elephant. And you having a good Kevin Owens for not having any WrestleMania moments. Let's go back to that match against Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 33. And let me pose this question to you, Seth Rollins. Have you ever fingered on the grandest stage of them all at WrestleMania and created one hell of a WrestleMania moment? Because my boy KO has. He fingered that rope so tastefully and with such grace. Oh, it's lovely. You can't beat me on my best day, Kevin. Well, I did a Google, Seth. Clash of Champions 2016, Hell in a Cell 2016, Raw Episodes 1,226, 1,359, and 1,383. All examples of matches where Kevin Owens beat Seth Rollins in one-on-one -on -one affairs. Yeah, that showed him. Ding, 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 ding. Na, 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 under pressure, I become a god. Wait there. Seth Rollins claims he's a god. Seth Rollins is also, I think, a professional wrestler. Could that mean that Seth Rollins is calling himself a wrestling god? I'm very tight for space here, but we'll give this a go. It's John O'Clock, everybody. <laughs> And then we end with a WTF moment from Charlotte Flair herself when she claimed that she broke Asuka's streak at 914 days and the disrespect you show Eve Marie Charlotte Flair is horrible. As we all know because we're sat here speaking about it most weeks these days, Eve Marie ended Asuka's streak before that streak could even become remotely streaky.
Oh, streaky bacon. <sighs> and that's it for all your WTF moments from this week's Raw. I've been Ross Twiddell, still your reigning and defending Cultaholic Heavyweight Champion. Raw was crap, wasn't it? What do I do now? Oh.